Hi there, I'm Andrea Koppel, and it's time for Coffee, the podcast where you get to hear firsthand what the jobs and careers that interest you the most are really like. Hey there, Java junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career double shot K-Cup with my guest, John Katzman. So I promised our young listeners that I would ask you for those who may not yet be in college, John, and may be thinking about going to college, whether online or on campus, why shouldn't they do what you and I were advised to do when we were applying to schools to pick your rich schools and your safety schools and the ones that you think you'll be able to get into? What is it that they should be doing differently? It turns out that most people think it's much harder to get into a great university than it was 30 years ago. The reality is it's much easier. You know, if you take the top 100 universities in the country, the number of spots in the freshman class for Americans, we're getting international students and there are more of them than there used to be, but the number of spots for American students is up by 45% over the past 30 years. The number of 17-year-olds graduating from high school who, or 18-year-olds, who are ready for a top education, who have reasonable grades and scores, is up 5 or 10%. Just numerically, you've got 45% more spots for 5 or 10% more students. It's just easier. It looks harder because the admissions process has changed. It used to be about reaches and safeties in in exactly the way you're saying. There used to be a matchmaker connecting you to the right school. And now it's more like Tinder. There are a whole bunch of good schools. You're going to apply to many more of them than students did back in the day. The average student now sends out three times as many applications as a student back then because of electronic applications and the common app. But all of these schools are therefore that much more selective at any one school You've just tripled the number of applicants and you're playing games with yield management and early decision to try to lower the number of students you're taking. So it seems as if schools are more selective. They're not. In the same way that dating, you know, back in the day, there's a matchmaker. It's my son, your daughter, it's Matt, and that's it. You're going to date one person and you're going to marry 100% of those people. And now you're going to swipe left and right. You're going to date 100 people. And you're going to marry one out of the hundred. And the person you marry will have dated a hundred people and same odds. It's not more selective. It's just different. Overall, it's an easier process if you understand it at all. And you recommend that they go for the early decision, right? They absolutely should go for early decision. At this point, a lot of schools, half the students are going to take are coming in early. So there are two bites at the apple. Why would you only play in one of those two games when you can play in both of them. The other thing about the admissions world as it is now, past a certain level of test score and a certain level of grades that are, you know, that are solid. It's not how colleges are making decisions. A student with a 3.7 is not a better applicant than a student with a 3.6. That's not what it's about. Once a selective college has decided, yeah, you can handle the work here. What they're really thinking about is how do I fill my class? I need a certain number of athletes for the football team. I need a certain number of engineers. I need some balance between male and female, between different ethnicities or different geographies. I'm not St. Peter at the gate. I'm a casting director. I need a tall guy with white hair to play Uncle Bob. I need a short fat kid to play Billy. Like It's not about the five (laughs) best actors. It's about a cast. It's about an ensemble. It's really important because people think, you know, if they kill themselves and take a zillion really difficult courses, APs or whatever, and they study like crazy to get a perfect score on the test, that it matters. And past a certain point, it doesn't matter at all. What does matter is that you pursue your passion, that if you love journalism, 
that you're out there writing stories or interning for some local newspaper or radio show or blog. If you love art, you know, that you're doing art and that you're taking it seriously because somebody who has pursued a passion, they might get to college and say, well, I'm done with that, but they'll find another passion. Once you've been down that road and you're not a tourist anymore and you're really having intense conversations with other people who really love this stuff, like it's intoxicating. You will become passionate about something else. And if I'm a college admissions officer and I'm thinking, boy, here's somebody who never became passionate. All they've done is robot-like get grades and scores and done some extra curriculums because I think it looks good on the application. I have no idea if they'll develop a passion here. I have no idea if they're going to leave a footprint on this school at all. So it's about differentiation in this world that's more tenderized. So the college admissions process, it's not harder. It's just different. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to Time for Coffee, where the professionals in the jobs that most interest you always have time to grab coffee 24-7, no matter where you live. I have one quick favor to ask you. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Time for Coffee. Thanks so much.